The strong break from the defending world nine ball champion Earl Strickland as this evening he goes up against Nick Varner in the finals of this year's world nine ball championship. Kim Prince along with Bill in Cardona at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas and Bill Earl Strickland stalks a table and he is one shot maker is he not? He certainly is and you referred to the strong break well he's the most explosive player in the world because of that very reason he has the strongest break in the world and this isn't particularly the type of a racket you would like to start a match with a lot of congestion right hand corner of the table That's a nice shot the, uh, for the opening shot of the rack. And Earl's certainly glad that shot's over with. Another tester on the three. He's having a, having a problem finding a place for his bridge hand. If he happens to touch any ball on the table, it's a foul. He, uh, want to make, he wants to make sure that doesn't happen. Notice the ball went in the center of the pocket, as most of the shots do. Position on the six is the key to the rack. Very seldom will you see indecision from this man. Sometimes he will run a table in less than three minutes. That's a very interesting point. Earl Strickland, in my opinion, has more natural ability than any player I've ever watched play the game. very intense player at the table. Looks like he may play position for the 8-9 combination here. Oh no, he elected to go into the 8, coming up with a nice shot on the 8 at the upper left hand corner. Strickland runs the table in a little more than a couple of heartbeats, and he now leads Nick Warner 1 0 in this the final of the World Championships. And hello again, everybody. I'm Kim Prince, along with former World Nine Ball Champion Bill Incardona, and welcome to the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas for the World Nine Ball Championships. Well, Bill, we have one of those marvelous situations with the defending champion as well as the number one player in the world. And right now, Strickland has won the first game. How does it play out from here? Well, Kim, you're right. This is a classic matchup, and I'm really excited about this match. I mean, you couldn't expect to get two finer players in the finals of a world tournament than Earl Strickland and Nick Varner. Uh, Earl won the first game of the, of the match, and uh, he's such a strong offensive player, probably the greatest offensive player I've seen for sure, okay? Nick Varner, on the other hand, the toughest player in the world to beat. How I see it from here, I, I, think, that, uh, I think that Earl's a slight favorite to win the match, but of course you never can count Nick out, you know? Nick's a more of a deliberate, deliberate player at the table, and Earl, on the other hand, well, he just likes to go to the whip, he goes to the offensive game all the time. And so you have a real strong shot maker in Strickland. The thing to remember about Varner is that he has tremendous composure. He didn't get to be number one without keeping his cool when the going gets tight. It'll be interesting to say if the g games get tight toward the end, how the personalities come into play. Well, I'll tell you, if the game gets tight near the end, Varner's going to be extremely difficult to beat because he's not going to give anything away. Earl? I don't think he handles adversity as well as Nick, but of course, Earl's playing so well right now, he's capable of doing anything. He seemed to have been invincible throughout the entire tournament. I kind of look for him to play the same style. Las Vegas, a great place to turn a buck, especially if you're on a roll like these two have been this week. We started with 64. We are now down to the final two. We'll be back with more of the World Nine Ball Championship after this. The rules of nine ball are really quite simple. The balls are shot in numerical order. The winner must pocket the nine ball, unless, of course, he does it on the break. And it is a race to nine <coughs> games. And right now, Earl Strickland has a game in hand and the strongest break in pool. One, two, three. As he's pocketed three balls on the break, like we all saw, and uh, he's at the table with an excellent opportunity to build, to build a lead. 
you saw him change cues. He has a special brake cue and then this custom made cue, which oh, might run you four or five hundred bucks if you want to have one made. Okay, now position on the four ball may be a problem. He has to get an entirely down table for suitable position on the four. Really not much room for error. He has to get all the way down table here. No. But I heard Earl say no, and uh, I understand why he said no. Scratching in the uh, lower left-hand corner pocket, Nick Myers got to the table with his first opportunity in the match. Okay, now this is a very difficult shot, but he has to come all the way down the table, and controlling the cue ball could be a problem. There's not much area for him to work with down here. Just a little pumped up, hit it too hard. And he scratches, so now Nick Varner will have ball in hand. And our first look at the number one player in the world. The six, the six ball is at the other end of the table. Nick's got a nice angle on the four to go up the table toward the six. He should hit the side cushion. Then going toward the six. So the reserved and quiet Nick Varner has himself the first game as the more outspoken Earl Strickland watches on. This is the finals of the World Nine Ball Championships in Las Vegas. We'll be back with game three in a moment. Steve Miserak didn't quite make his way to the final, but Steve, you played better than you fared. I played pretty well. Uh, the guy who eliminated me, uh, Ralph Suquet from Germany, uh, got a couple lucky breaks in the last set. But he played good, so he deserved it. You know, he, he does play well. The talk around the tournament this week is that the European field is playing much better than ever before. It's the same field that was uh, last year. Uh, same guys, but only they're playing a little bit better. And as the years progress, they'll keep on playing better and better and better. What's next for Steve Miserak after this? Uh, Steve Miserak is now a Q importer, businessman extraordinaire that uh, doesn't concentrate too much upon his game and... Uh, uh, tends more to business. Okay, safe trip home and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. One of the more familiar faces, Steve Miserak. And now Earl Strickland is up 2-1 over Nick Varner. We are joining the action in game number four. Oh, now hold it, one. Gets one ball to drop on the break. Does not get a second. But uh, unlike the semifinals, Earl has come up with the shot. That's the problems the players had in the semifinals. They were pocketing balls, but they weren't able to come up with a shot. Not so here. <sighs> Earl's going to elect to play the two in the side pocket. It doesn't fall. I knew I should have drawn that ball. Golly. Well, it looks like Earl hastily shot the two, and they hit it too softly. Something that's really uncharacteristic of the way he plays. Okay, if given the choice, he would rather play the two in the corner, but he doesn't have that angle, so he's going to have to, to elect to play the more difficult shot into the side. Well, it didn't work out for him. Varner now has an opportunity at the table. But, Bill, he hasn't left uh, Varner much of a shot either, has he? Well, I believe Varner can strike the two, oh. and he can't... Well, <laughs> what happened there? I mean, uh... <laughs> Just like I said, not much of a shot. So, Nick Varner has blinked first in this match, and has scratched. So now, after being given a chance by Earl Strickland, Varner returns Thank the favor. 
and Strickland is back at the table. Yeah, yeah it's a very, very uh, uncommon thing that you're going to see Nick Varner do. He, he very rarely makes a mistake like that. We're all Strickland at the table. Looks like uh, the four ball will be the next ball he'll play position for, which is under his bridge hand. He'll draw the two ball back to the center of the table. Now, this next shot coming up is a very interesting one uh, in the respect that he really doesn't have that many pockets to uh, play position for on the six. I'm kind of curious to, uh, to see exactly what he does do. Come on, He's the opposite of that down table. Executing that particular shot very nicely. Matter of fact, he couldn't have placed the cue ball in a better location. He's starting to get into the rhythm, but he enjoys playing in. which for pool circles would be supersonic. And so the man who some have compared to John McEnroe for his shot making abilities as well as being outspoken has taken a 3-1 lead in the finals over Nick Varner. It's a tough job, somebody's gonna do it. As we rejoin the action, each player has won another two games. Strickland still leads five to three, and he has dropped four balls in this rack. Well, he has an excellent opportunity mm, to widen the happen. gap here, and he looks like he's uh, played himself out of position on the five. Oh, boy. He would like to pocket the five in the lower left-hand oh, no. corner pocket, but that shot isn't as easy as it may appear. Okay, narrowly missing the five. Uh, Varner steps to the table. Uh, he doesn't look like he has that good of a shot on the five. But he does have an option. He can either go for the pocket, playing position on the six. He's got about a make percentage of about 40% with that shot. But if he locates the cue ball, positions the cue ball behind the nine, to accomplish that, he's looking at about a 97% success rate. Perfectly. Okay, now Strickland's going to probably have to kick at the five with a lot of speed because uh, this type of a shot, you really have to look to get lucky. Such an easy here. out. I don't get out. Seems to be dwelling over the fact that he missed the five. But uh, has to hit this with some speed. Now give himself a chance to uh, luck in the five. It is. Yeah. Well, it looks like Nick's decision on playing safe on the five uh, maybe uh, has given him a chance to win this game. He's looking to, uh, to see what type of an angle that he needs to come off of that side cushion. He wants to go in between the seven and the nine, playing position for the six in the lower left-hand corner pocket. Strickland had some rhythm going early on, but Nick Varner has yet to really establish the kind of rhythm and table layout he'd like. Race to nine, Strickland up 5-3. Let's go two rails in between the seven and the nines. Well, he ran into the seven there, Kim, and it looks like he's, looks like he's hooked himself and he hasn't come up with the shot. He elected to kick the, not, kick the six from behind, sending it up the table. Man. Actually, leaving Earl not too, too good of a shot here. He doesn't have a safety. He's going to probably have to go for the shot. That's his only choice. And he doesn't work.
Oh, bounce hard. This ball's gonna stop. It's not only gonna stop, it's gonna come back toward the middle of the table. Well, he wasn't able to pocket the six, but uh, it, didn't look like, it doesn't look like he's left Nick that easy of a shot on the six. He has an option. He can either cut it into the side or bank it cross side. There's problems with either shot. I look from the bank, the, uh, the six cross side, Kim, and uh, playing position on the seven in the little right-hand corner pocket. If he plays the six directly into the left-hand side, he's going to have to elevate the butt of his cue, diminishing the accuracy of the shot. I'm certainly sure he doesn't want to do that, so it looks like he's going to bank it cross side. He's about even money to make this bank. Well, he, uh, he hit it on the short side of the pocket, not cutting it enough. That's not and, uh, a good leave. Strickland comes to the table with a shot, and he just said it's not a good leave. That side pocket may come into play. Controlling the cue ball could be a problem on the shot. Controlling the cue ball was a problem. That's why he elected to play position for the bank cross side. but that wasn't a problem. And the game bureau, Strickland, we began with 64 players. We are down to the final two, and Strickland now has a six to three lead. And here's a look Strickland at that bank six. shot that Varner Varner's missed three. earlier. Well, game nine is the key game of the matchup at this point. If Nick was able to pocket the six ball cross side, he would have then come within one game of the lead, but he wasn't able to do that. He stumbled twice in game nine. If he goes on to lose this match, he can look back to game number nine. Strickland with the game. Great. One ball, two balls. Will he get a third? No. Okay, he has an option to play the two in either the side or the corner. Playing it in the side, you probably won't be able to play position for the four, so he's going to have to go for the corner. Very long, testy shot. Two ball, center of the table. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. He made one difficult shot. A slow roll at the length of the table. Not a very easy shot. Four ball in the lower right-hand corner. The five ball sitting there in the lower left-hand corner. Elevating. Oh, no. Oh. Very nicely done. This is the key shot of the rack. Playing position for the six. work of this rack started off with the two ball. And I don't foresee any problems oh, for the oh, remainder of the rack. Please stop. Boys from North Carolina can't keep an angle. <laughs> Boys from North Carolina can't keep an angle when they shoot as straight as Earl Strickland. They don't really need an angle. All right. And so Earl Strickland talking to the ball, talking to himself, and Nick Warner can only sit and listen. Many of the pool fanatics out there may be wondering, where is Alan Hopkins and Steve Miserick, two top American players? Well, here is uh, Ralph Souquet, and uh, you can thank Ralph for knocking those two top seeds out of this tournament. First of all, congratulations. 
Thank you very much. And Ralph not only knocked the two of them out of the tournament, but he's done awfully well this year. Last year, the World Championships were in his home country of Germany. There was a lot more Americans in the top finals then. We've really had quite an international showing here at this championship. Yeah, you are right. There are a lot of good pool players all over the world. And here in America, there are a lot of Asian players and European players. They play better this year, and I think next year, maybe there is a European or Asian player still world champion. We've seen a big surge in pool throughout the world. Talk about how the popularity of the sport has increased in Germany. The pool in Germany, or ex I will say in Europe, is growing up every year. So uh, this year we have about two million pool players in you <coughs> in Germany maybe next year or the next years there will be five or six million so it's still growing up okay Ralph Suke he's a name you may hear in the future safe trip back thank you very much thank you Kevin we rejoin the action now with Nick Varner having won game 11 but Strickland still in the lead seven to four first man to nine win Gets a ball in the lower bottom corner pocket. Well, he pocketed a ball on the break, but he uh, can't even see the one. Looks like he's going to have to push here. And the problem is, where do you push? The five and nine, uh, they're tied up kind of like on the other side of the table. But where do you push from this point? That's the problem he's confronted with. A push, of course, is a free shot after the break where a player does not need to hit either the ball or a rail. And now, as Bill mentions, where to put it? Well, Nick certainly uh, used a lot of fine judgment on that push, pushing to a place on the table where Strickland can't even hit the one. I'm certainly sure Strickland's going to pass it back to Nick. <coughs> well, as I thought, Strickland didn't like the shot that was offered to him, so therefore he has the option to either accept the shot or pass it back to the player that pushed. He passed it back to Nick. A lot of charity going on here. Foreigner working that gum as he always does. That's one of his characteristics. Ooh, and he almost makes it. Oh. Well, he didn't really kick the ball absolutely enough to uh, put Strickland in trouble. Now Strickland comes to the table with an excellent opportunity. He, is, he used, obviously, good judgment in passing the shot. Two ball at the other side of the table, nearly the uh, upper left-hand corner. This is a big game for Earl. It'll put him on the hill. Let's come down and play the nine. This play is nice. Looks like he's going to play position for the short rack 3 9 combination. Hmm, not the best thing in the world. Strickland won the World Nine Ball Championships last year in Bergheim, Germany. Has been player of the year four times. And he has had that intense look all week. He's never been in danger of losing a match at all. Well, that was a very difficult combination, and uh, he wasn't able to come up with it. Nick Warner now steps to the table with an opportunity to capture this game. Now, uh, if you notice, he narrowly missed the combination. It wasn't a very easy combination by any means. Okay, the five ball will be the next ball we'll need to shoot. Playing position for the five, which is down the other end of the table. He's walking around the table. It obviously doesn't like the angle that he has on the floor. Five ball is underneath his bridge hand. 
So you're going to have to probably try to create some type of an angle on this shot. And then trying to create an angle off of the four, he missed pocket of the four. But if you notice, when the cue ball went behind the seven, it doesn't appear. It doesn't appear that Strickland's really happy about the results. As if he meant to do that. <laughs> Funny. Okay, Varner's come up with an awkward angle on the four. It looks like he's going to have to create one. He's going to have to sacrifice the accuracy of the shot to create the angle, and it looks like he just wasn't able to do it. <laughs> and Durrell has next to nothing to shoot out here. He doesn't like at all what he's been left with. Look at this oh. shot! Well, there was plenty of reason for Earl to be so excited. I mean, to make a shot like that was really, uh, really an incredible shot. Right. Just like a, a hole in one in golf. You know you want to get, you know you want to get a hole in one, but you don't figure to get it. <laughs> Unbelievable. The four ball down the table kisses the nine, and Earl Strickland has the game. The dream shot, the perfect shot. Lady Luck on his side, Earl Strickland, a game away from the championship. A brief pause in the action, and Mike Massey shows us a little trick shot. Okay, we're playing eight ball. My opponent had the stripes, he cleans the table, gets bad position for the eight ball. So he rolls the cue ball up here like this, and he tries to play a safety on me. So what I'm going to try to do is pocket the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and play shape for the eight ball all in the same shot. There we go. Now, <coughs> thank you. My opponent knew if I made that shot, I could make this one. He just gave me the eight ball. <laughs> thank you. Fun, ain't it? <laughs> Game 13. This will be uh, Strickland's last opportunity to break the balls. He knows it. Varner sitting sedately in his chair, patiently waiting for an opening that may never come. Hold it. And he's come up with a shot. Looks bad for Nick. Well, you can pocket the one in the upper right-hand corner. The two ball sits on the same cushion. There may be a problem with the 3-7. The, the three will not pass the seven into the lower right-hand corner pocket. <laughs> well, that was... I needed it hard enough. I'm not Combination quite sure if he likes the angle me. that he has on the two. He only has one pocket to play position for on the three, and that's the lower left, unless he elects to play the combination, which I don't think he likes. On the way down. Looks like he wants to come down table playing position for the three in either the upper right or the side pocket. That's too hard. He's not going to like it. <laughs> well, there haven't been many safeties in this game, but you're getting ready to see one. And I didn't even execute it. Okay, Earl played a safety on that shot, but it didn't look like he did a very good job of it. He wanted to place the cue ball where the arrow is behind the four. I play bad on this guy every time I play him. But he wasn't able to do Never it. Never play good on him. I guess it was kind of a carryover because he fell out of line on the three. He allowed that to distract him. <sighs> this is a big shot for Nick. Got 
very much. Seems to be the crucial shot of this rack. Shoot by the six in the upper left hand corner. This is for the seven in the lower right hand corner pocket. See any problems for the remainder of the rack? The eight in front of the lower left hand corner, the nine cross table. Stays alive in this the World Championships of Nine Ball Pocket Nick Varner made the break, but he sank the cue ball along with three others, and now Earl Strickland has ball in hand above the head string and it's played a safety. He's played an excellent safety, Ken. Nick Nick steps to the table now without a shot. But uh, something good could come of this shot. If Nick kicks off the bottom cushion, comes down table, hits the uh, left-hand side of the one, the one will depart to the right, the cue ball will then stay to the left. He could come out of this in pretty good shape. <laughs> and he does. Good shot, Nick. And there you heard in the background, Earl Strickland saying, good shot, Nick. These two have played, by the way, 16 times. It was a great times, shot. <clears throat> and it is eight apiece. Earl Strickland still one game away from the World Championship. Now, Earl wanted to send the one ball off the table a little farther than that. Unfortunately, it didn't get up the table any further than it did. That was too good. Barner now steps to the table with a long, testy shot on the one. It looks like the 2-5, which is on the lower left-hand part of the table, seem to be kind of like straight in in the, in the corner pocket. There's a chance that he can make the 2-5 combination. But first, he has to make the one. Okay, I'm, I'm certainly sure, sure he's glad that shot's over with. Now, making the 2-5 combination doesn't seem to be much of a problem, but controlling the two ball is a problem. At three pockets, a 2-5 combination, controlling the object ball being the two ball, that's the problem. You must end up with some type of a shot on the two at three pockets the combination. How well did he control the object ball? I can't tell. When he's at the table, looking at the shot, then we'll be able to tell a little bit better exactly what type of a shot he has. Earl was, Earl was kind of surprised to see him shoot that shot in that fashion. He doesn't have a shot. It looks like he's going to have to bank it. A lot of pressure out there right now. Oh, he was able to bank it. Yeah. Notice how closely the two ball was to the three ball. Another problem. And on the other side of the table, the four and the nine are very close together. He doesn't have a pocket to pocket the four in. He has a difficult shot on the three. Not only does he have to pocket the three, but he's going to have to do something with the four and nine. On this particular shot, he's going to either have to go into the four or the nine with the cue ball. And from that point, there's the four. He's going to have to go in. Now, the six is at the other end of the table. After playing position on the four, he has to get back down the table for, for position on the six. 
So he has a lot of work ahead of him. Throughout this competition, the table has played out not to Nick Varner's liking. Strickland has had the favorable breaks. Great shot. Nick was able to pocket the difficult shot on the three, running into the nine, and fortunately has ended up with a cross side bank on the four. The six ball at the other end of the table. He still must play position on the six if he expects to get out this rack, and doing that isn't going to be easy. Now he's going to bank the four, cross side. The two ball then will go three cushions, hitting the side cushion, bottom cushion, and then the side cushion again going up toward the six. Mm. And narrowly missing the side pocket. Absolutely delectable. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Nick Varner composed. If he can get it close, he will continue to improve. He claims that the closer it gets, the better he likes it. He needs to get this table now. Bear in mind, Warner has five games. Earl Strickland has eight. Well, a routine final shot, but nothing routine about that game for Nick Warner. The pressure all on him. Earl Strickland still one game away well, from the world championship. Six. Nick Varner has compared himself to Jack Nicklaus in his ability to manage his game. And now, as he sinks a ball in the break, he must manage the cue ball. Okay, okay he has a shot on the one. The two ball is uh, near the left-hand side ball. pocket. Earl seems like uh, he's, for the, for, the, for the first time in the match, in imminent danger of losing the match. He really doesn't like that at all. And this is what we suggested at the top of the match. What would happen when it got close? How would the personalities begin to come into play? Varner, the more composed, less vocal, quiet, very much like a stone-faced poker player. Earl Strickland, never any doubt about what he's feeling. Always wears his emotions on his face. And that's one of the main reasons why Nick Varner is able to come back consistently because of his, because of his unexcitable temper. Temperament at the table. Now he has a shot on the three in the lower right-hand corner. He, he needs to come off the side cushion, which he does. Position for the five should be in the same pocket. Can he run this table from here, Bill? I don't see any problems uh, from this point on. Pocket the five in the lower right hand corner, hitting the side cushion. If he's able to pocket the six and obtain the uh, correct shot or angle on the eight, this rack should be history.
the table goes to Nick Varner, the number one player in the world, but Earl Strickland still a game away. Before we begin the 16th game, Buddy Hall has an inside tip for us. Okay, here we have a situation to where we come to the table and we're hooked. We have, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to kick behind the seven, making the seven in this side, and if we miss the seven, then we should have our opponent hooked behind the eight. So this is the way we'll do it. And that's how you do it. You saw what happened when he pocketed the seven. This is what happens when he misses the seven. Notice the results. The cue ball behind the eight. That's exactly what he wanted to happen. have happened. And what Nick Varna would like to have happen now is pocket the nine ball off the break. <coughs> Earl Strickland oh. is up eight oh. seven. But Nick Varna on the comeback now. <sighs> and yeah, no Earl, my hands are a little bit clammy too. Nick's played brilliantly in two games, 13, 14, and 15. It looks like it's a very, very even match at this point. That was a gutty shot for him. He kicked indirectly into the cushion, he's talking in the one in the lower right-hand corner, knowing that he was going to end up with this type of a shot on the two. It's a very long, tough shot on the two. Notice the position of the cue ball in the jog of the upper right-hand corner pocket. You know, he has a choice here. He can kick him back at the two, sending the two up table and play a safety. But at this time, I don't think he's thinking about playing safe. Looks like he's going after the juggler here. And how tough is it playing from the, the rail behind the pocket? Very tough. <laughs> and it won't drop. You know, I thought that, that he made that ball when he hit it. It looked like he hit it well enough for it to go, but unfortunately, unfortunately the ball didn't drop. The two balls just hanging, and I don't know what's keeping it up. This is the game that Strickland needs to win the title. And that was one of the most difficult shots that you could see. Long straight in, having hit the has to hit the two ball squarely, getting drawn the cue ball back toward the four. Now this shot coming up is difficult also. He's, he's got a small area to get the cue ball in for four position on the five. Oh no, I snookered myself. No, I didn't. <laughs> Hold it. I do not believe that guy did that. In the middle of my shot, he hit me with a flash. Well, I saw the flash go off. It didn't distract Earl to the point where he missed the ball, but he's got an awkward angle on the seven. Uh, as I expected, he had to stop the cue ball dead for position on the eight, Ross side. Yes! Well, pocketing the eight was game ball for him. He knew it. He knew it. And he raised his hand. And <laughs> Thank you. And now the flashes crank up, and justifiably so. Earl Strickland, the winner, 9-7 over a game, but on this day, overmatched Nick Varner. And yes, give yourself a round of applause, Earl Strickland. The defending champion goes on to win the 1990 World Nine Ball Championship. Congratulatory hug.
And for the first time, the contended side. And with shots like this in game 12, a miraculous 4-9 combination that gave Earl Strickland that game and set him on a roll that carried him throughout the rest of the day. And right now, he's with Kevin Cusick. A week long of competition, you played one intense match after another, and tonight was no different. Yes, uh, Nick's a very good player, and uh, we had a tough match, and uh, I, I got very fortunate to win that match. At what point in what game did you think you had him? Well, when, when I got 8-4, I figured I had him, but uh, I kept coming up with a combination off the break, and, uh, and that kept him alive, I think. You showed a lot of excitement throughout the week. You like to uh, get your emotions going, to say the least. Was there any time that you felt oversight? No, this is a game of... Uh, of uh, excitement and uh, that's why that's why carries me through the winds late in the match someone took a uh, snapshot seemed to bother you a little bit there seemed a little bit unfair uh, almost like uh, they were rooting for the other fella well I know everybody wants to get pictures but let's wait until the events over and for for flash photography because uh, it's very distracting how about now you, what's going through your mind I feel great and I, I, I feel as good as I can feel I defended my title I represented my country there's no better feeling than this in the world, believe me. Earl, congratulations. I'd like to say hello to the people back in Greensboro, where I reside, and hello to everybody in Roseboro, where I come from, and Stan Smith down in uh, Hilton Head. Reggie Bray, you guys get them golf clubs out, because I'm coming. <laughs> okay. He's from North Carolina, and he's now the world nine-ball champion. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Kevin. Tee it up, boys. I'm coming home. And for Nick Varner, it was this kind of day. On that two ball in the last game, would have kept him alive. It didn't fall. And right now, Kevin Cusick is with him. Nick, you played competitive right to the very end. Yeah, the match, it was kind of, uh, Earl got a big jump on me there. He had me eight to four. But I tell you what, when I was shooting the two ball, I thought he was mine. I mean, <laughs> I really thought I had, I thought if I could just make that two, it looked like that was like the winning shot that game. And 8-8 eight, eight with me breaking, uh, I knew I was in the match, and uh, but, uh, you know, Earl, he started out and played real good, got a good lead, and, uh, you know, he played real good. He's been loud and somewhat boisterous all week. Did that bother you at all when he started uh, getting a little uh, over-anxious here? No, it doesn't bother me, uh, you know, uh, you know I don't really care what he does. It seemed to have the momentum going in his favor, and he seems to really play on that. You seem to be steady as a rock after that, though. Yeah, I made a real good out that one rack. I had to cut the three way down in the corner, bank the four, and and uh, that was a real tough out, and I, I got out that game and stuff, and I really started feeling like I could win that match. You know, I was starting to pull up 8-6 and then 8-7, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, when I was shooting at that two, I could have played a safe on the two or the one, but uh, I liked the opportunity of, uh, they both looked easy to me, so I had to go for them. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, for the whisper of a two ball. But there is your champion, Earl Strickland. So, for Bill N. Cardona and Kevin Cusick, I'm Tim Prince. See you next time.